Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha, I'm Leslie Wilcox, here to introduce an encore presentation of a Hikino special from last summer that was hosted and co-written by a gifted Hikino alumna, 2016 Waianae High School graduate, Crystal Sabeto. Crystal is in the second semester of her sophomore year at Menlo College in Northern California, where she's majoring in marketing and human resources on a full scholarship. Even with a packed academic schedule, she still finds time to tutor other students and volunteers on a regular basis for projects such as Habitat for Humanity. Crystal told us via email that part of achieving success is caring about and believing in what you're doing. She says, Hikino allowed me to see the value of working towards something that is both socially relevant and important to you personally. Here is Crystal Sabeto with the Hikino special, Focus on Compassion, Self-Identity. I'm Crystal Sabeto, a former Hikino student and 2016 Waianae High School graduate. Hawaii is a melting pot of cultures, ethnicities, and traditions. For some of us, being part of a melting pot reassures us of who we are, but for others, it can be left in question. When we look through the past Hikino episodes, compassion towards one's identity seemed to be a common concern among Hikino students. Whether it be identity in terms of culture, gender, body image, ethnicity, or appearance, Hikino students exemplify acceptance and compassion through their storytelling. For the next half hour, we will explore some of the different ways individuals identify themselves or struggle with their identity in this episode of Hikino Focus on Compassion, Self-Identity. For our first story, we'll take a look at how one teenager became the mother figure that she lacked in her childhood and the plan she's cooked up for her future. From Kauai High School, here is Kelsey Nats. Prove that being a 16-year-old girl doesn't mean a life of nail polish and hair products. Run. Kelsey Nats enjoys paddling, basketball, mentoring at the Boys and Girls Club, and the occasional reinforcement of her brother's abs. Um, Boys and Girls Club is my family because besides my family, this family, like, they're there for me. She's nice and she takes yeah, care of us. She takes care of us. And she's related to me. Staff member Grace Peralta has seen her mentoring at the club for years. She just likes being that mother figure. I guess it's probably because she doesn't have that, so she wants to be that for other people. My mom passed away when I was seven, so I live with my dad my stepmom and my grandma. My dad is always telling me, oh, she went up to heaven. She's like with the angels. But my mom, there's like a different connection between me and my mom and my brothers and my, my dad. Like we wake up on Sunday mornings and like cook everyone breakfast. Her mother left behind a recipe for success that Kelsey could follow. She inspired me to like actually go to culinary school and I want to open up a restaurant. She likes to cook for everyone. She loves cooking, she loves providing. But food isn't the only thing Kelsey brings to the table. Some of the kids, like, they call me mom. I don't know why. I guess because I knew them for so long. They call me mom and they like treat me like I'm their mom with, like shoots. I like adopted six kids in like a month of coming to Boys and Girls Club. I think they see me as a role model, which I love. And the feeling is mutual. I love you, Kelsey. For Hikino, this has been Sydney Brady. One girl is torn between the strict traditions she grew up with and the culture of the island she lives in now. Her next step is determined by her decision to either return home or to remain in Hawaii. From Lahaina Luna High School on Maui, we introduce you to Kimberly Yap. Being half Micronesian and half Filipino and coming here, living here, it's hard for me. Kimberly Yap is a senior at Lahaina Luna High School. At the age of five, Kim moved with her parents and a few close family members from Gidibes, a small Micronesian island, to Maui. 
my family moved here looking for a better life, looking for better education for myself. Right now, our island, Giribas, is sinking from global warming and there's nothing they can do. There's nothing anybody can do. It just, it's a poor community, you know? It hasn't evolved yet into what this world has come to. Me and my family are deciding whether I should go back to my island after graduation or save the money for college. We're just kind of in a stump right now because we don't know what we're gonna do. My family's trying to teach me one culture and then I'm living in another culture, so what, what culture do I live in, you know? My family's very strict. Girls aren't allowed to cut their hair. They're not allowed to dye their hair. You're supposed to live conservative. Being a girl in our tradition, you can't be out late and you, you just have so much rules, you know. Girls were meant to be, you know, the housewives instead of the um, smart business maker. The main focus or the main cultural thing about Giribas is just to respect your elders and to respect the ones around you and I think that's really stuck on to me and it's been like my life. It is who I am and I'm proud of who I am. Not going back home is like losing a big part of my life but this is home now. I don't want to be a housewife and I think that's why the best choice for me is to go to college. I, I need to grow up and I think going to college, getting a good job, maybe going back home, showing my family that I'm successful in life could really like help us out. This is Sophia Freddy from Lahaina Luna High School for Hiki Now. A similar take on culture as self-identity leads us to our next story. Here, Hiki no students tell us about a non-native musician whose Hawaiian music strikes a chord with his local audiences. From Mid-Pacific on Oahu, here is Mark Yamanaka. Mark Yamanaka has won eight Nahoku Hano Hano Awards, including Male Vocalist of the Year and Album of the Year for both his CDs, Lei Pua Kenny Kenny in 2011 and Lei Miley in 2014. Both of his CDs reached the top 10 on Billboard's World Album Charts. Hokus are great, and I'm going to speak for myself because there are so many people out there that really live by trying to win a hoku. Because, you know, it is the highest honor of musicianship here in the islands. Um, I've never strived for that, you know. When I release CDs or make music, I want to make music for the audience, for myself, for my kids, for my family, so that it'll live forever. challenges for me um, being uh, non-Hawaiian doing Hawaiian music I would say is was a huge burden on my shoulders and I don't think a lot of people realized what I what I was feeling inside you know in my mind and in my heart <laughs> My next challenge from those thoughts were to learn Hawaiian music to the best of my ability and gain respect from, from all these uh, people that I have admired who, that, who had performed Hawaiian music. And I think that was my primary goal as, as a musician growing up. So, 
you know, for all you folks out there that love Hawaiian music, just do it, you know. Learn it, learn it properly, learn it, do it the right way with the language, and everything will be okay. There's no wrong in doing it. This is Bailey Ogawa from In Pacific Institute for Hikino. Our next story involves a group of teenagers with a few tricks up their sleeves. See how these cosplayers allow their true selves to shine when they're dressed up as someone else. From Waiakea High School on the island of Hawaii, here is Cosplay. I'm a very quiet person. I just don't like to talk. But I feel like I just completely change when I go in costume. Some people only dress up for Halloween, but for cosplayers, this type of transformation is simply a part of who they are. I'm suddenly able to go out and talk to people and, you know, maybe act a bit in character or, you know, take pictures with people or help people out with something. I don't know. It's, it's really great that I'm just finally able to talk to the world. <laughs> Waiakea High School students Kai and Denali Davis have been cosplaying for a few years now. Cosplay or costume play is the act of dressing up as characters from books, movies, TV, video games, or even simple imagination. Dressing up may seem like a simple hobby, but there's a lot more to being a cosplayer. Cosplay has helped us make friends in ways that we didn't really expect. It started off with me and, like, I don't know, three or four friends just like, hey, let's make a costume together, like, let's coordinate our costumes right, cool. and this should be fun and once we did that we ended up going outside and wearing our costumes in public and we got a lot of weird looks but we ended up making some friends and cosplay has really helped us like break out of our shell. So there's the usual places of getting stuff you know the store or uh, what's like Walmart or something. Yeah, Walmart or like Salvation Army you know, like thrift stores. And then there's like some more unusual places, like the recycling center. I've used caulk, and I've used an old hiking backpack and totally cut that up just to hold a pair of wings. Yeah, I've, I've used some weird stuff, like half a pound of feathers. <laughs> Aside from one annual convention, there aren't many opportunities to cosplay on the Big Island, but Kai and Denali are hoping to change that. Anyone can cosplay, like, it's not bound by gender or sexual orientation or, you know, your size, like, you could be, like, 12 feet tall or, you know, like, 7,000 pounds. They encourage more people to embrace their inner superhero, one costume at a time. This is Puina Levi from Waikea High School for Hiki No. The way we view ourselves greatly affects our self-esteem. When we perceive ourselves negatively, we might see flaws that aren't there. The Hikino students at Maui Waina Intermediate School on the island of Maui take a personal approach to an ever-increasing issue, body image. Casey Arase is an 11-year-old at Maui Waina Intermediate School. From the outside, she seems to have a perfect life. Casey is an extremely hard worker, um, puts in a lot of time, uh, as I understand it, both in the classroom and on the field. Everyone views Casey as a healthy, normal sixth grade girl, but when Casey looks in the mirror, she sees something else. Well, I remember um, when I was little, I used to always love Disney princesses and how they used to be so skinny. So when I found out, when I was old enough to look in the mirror and see I'm not like them, it made me realize that I think I'm fat. Basically, girls who think they're fat when they're not is based around their body image. And typically that means that they have a poor body image. And our body image is how we perceive our bodies. It's something that's psychological. It's not necessarily based on facts. Well, I know I should be thinking that a beautiful girl is nice, sweet, kind, but my image of a beautiful girl is skinny, pretty, small, and that girl is just not me. Even with her busy life and many accomplishments, Casey is still hindered by her self-image. 
Well, I'm not as confident. It makes me feel more shy or bashful because like, you know, I'm scared of what pe might pe people might think about me. Because of how female beauty is depicted in advertising and the media, many girls find it difficult to reconcile what they think they should be with who they are. We're seeing images of women that have this unachievable body. 5'11 and 117 pounds, whereas the average woman is about 5'4 and 140 pounds. And only about 1% of the female population is even capable of achieving a model type figure. So we're trying to achieve something that's totally impossible. Faced with the problem of achieving the impossible, how should we respond? I honestly don't know. I, I try to, I try to like every day figure that out, but I just can't. There's a lot of really good websites out there with a lot of really good information and, you know, chat rooms and, and stuff like that. And if you do feel like yours is a more serious problem, you know, definitely do go seek help from the grade level counselor or talk to your parents about it and seek counseling outside of school. Today, Casey may not know how to solve the problem, but hopefully in the future, she will be part of the solution. This is Gail Tolentino from Maui Waina Intermediate School reporting for Hikino. In this story, we'll look through the lens of a photographer whose goals stem from a compassion for others and a need to address issues some people deal with every day. From Iolani School on Oahu, let's take a look through Rachel's camera. To most people, the snap of a camera is just the sound of a picture being taken. But for Iolani senior Rachel Heller, it's the sound of art. A lot of my work has to do with um, defying traditional gender roles and gender identities. I identify as feminist, so in the future I hope to use my photography and my art to help fight for women's rights and combat traditional gender roles. Rachel is dedicated to her art and will do almost anything to take the perfect picture. Even hiking into the forest and covering her subjects with Vaseline to get a particular effect. But eventually I um, use it as a way to create different realities and sort of shape my own identity. But I'm very thankful to have people who are willing to cooperate with me so I can achieve my vision. Through her photography and Empower Club that she helped start on campus, Rachel is working towards equal rights for women and helping girls understand that you don't have to look a certain way to be considered beautiful. We want to make sure girls are comfortable in their own skin and they understand that they don't have to conform to these stereotypes that are put out there by the media and even by their own peers. A lot of the art that I create comes from a very personal place and I did a series on anxiety and depression in black and white film last year and through that kind of imagery I hope that people who are facing the same sort of emotional trauma can relate and find some sort of solace. After I go to art school, um, I would love to shoot conceptual fashion photography because there's a lot out there that you can do with fashion and to be able to collaborate with different creative minds would be amazing. And I want to be able to share my own personal vision through galleries and just put myself out there. Hopefully I'll be able to translate a lot of my work into political activism as I get older. Rachel will attend Parsons, the new school for design in New York. Though she plans for a career in conceptual fashion photography, Rachel hopes that her work will have a powerful social message. This is Riley Sakamoto from Iolani School reporting for Hikino. A supportive community shows its true colors at an event that celebrates the diverse identities of people in Hawaii. From Moanalua High School on the island of Oahu, here is Pride and Diversity. We want to inspire, to encourage others um, to know and to feel comfortable, um, just to be who they are. That's it, just to, it's, it's okay. 
On October 22, 2016, people walked hand in hand wearing vibrant outfits through the streets of Waikiki to celebrate Hawaii's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer pride month. I think that's fantastic and it's even, even more special when we, when we have a pride day to celebrate it and everybody gets together and just is themselves. About 15,000 people of different races, ages and sexualities gathered to strengthen and support the rights of the LGBTQ community. Moanalua High School students and couple Rebecca Garcia and Danielle Warden stood proudly among the crowd. It gives us strength because we know that we can always rely on each other and even though we are all different, that isn't a bad thing. As I went to the prayer, like, wow, like, I'm not, I'm like accepted. It just makes me feel happy because like, no one looks at me strange. We look for people who've gone through the same experiences, have had the same struggles, have had the same rewards, and it's nice to know that there are other people out there going through the same thing as you. With over 10,000 LGBTQ identified youth in the nation, there are over 400 youth groups that offer support for students like Rebecca and Danielle to help them overcome any struggles of being confident in who they are. Because when you grow up, like all the couples you see are like a man and a woman. So like when you find out you're like gay, you just feel really out of place. My friends do give me strength because there's someone to talk to when you're like at the low. But I think the fact that they're part of the LGBT group as well means that we're like, we have similar problems, but that it's like easier to talk to them. I have friends who are pansexual, I have friends who are bisexual, I have friends who are gay, I have friends who are straight. And I think in particular, my friends who are queer as well, we kind of look for, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Even though we're all different, we can still, we're still all the same. And we can still confide in each other. Even though they have the strong support of each other, they still have to face the harsh realities of society. We've come so far, but people still want to hate. So I'm hoping that in the future, because you know we're kind of spreading more information about it and we're being more open with it, that it'll kind of die off. With such a diverse LGBTQ community, people like Rebecca and Danielle will continue to find their strength in their differences to be equal like everyone else. This is Jocelyn Bonilla from Moanlo High School for Hiki No. A middle school teacher's lifelong struggle turned into an inspiring life story that she shared with her students to teach them that appearance does not determine who we are as people. From Waianae Intermediate School on Oahu, here is Aurora's story. What can I get you boys? The unassuming waiter asked my father and me. At that moment, the room began to spin while beads of sweat dripped down my beet red face. A face free of eyelashes and eyebrows and tomboy attire to complete the ensemble. But behind the smile and outgoing personality is a story about a girl who struggled to fit in. Um, I was about eight years old and actually started pulling out my eyelashes first because I thought you know, it's like that legend that if you pull out your eyelash, or if an eyelash falls out, you can make a wish on it. And if you make a wish, like hopefully it'll come true. But when eyelashes led to eyebrows, something was clearly wrong. Trichotillomania is an impulse control disorder that causes me to pull out my hair as an adverse reaction to stress. To stress. As quickly as her hair, Aurora's self-confidence began to wear out. Even though I had a lot of friends, I just I was never a girl that any boys liked, which was always hard. They'd always talk to me about my friends, and they never looked at me as, as a girl that they could actually like. It was because of the way I looked. My youth was filled with petty dramas that occupied my every moment. And on top of the usual teenage drama, I had to cope with this problem. After a trip to Italy, she was left with fond memories and motherly advice that assured her of her well-being. And my Italian mom would say to me all the time, non ti preoccupare, which means don't worry in Italian. And I think I was an entirely different person when I came back from that trip because it just, I realized that I shouldn't worry about the little things because they don't matter. And I have so many good friends that don't care what I look like and don't care about my hair that there's actually no reason for me to worry. With new confidence and a new haircut, Aurora went on with a teaching career. 
And I said, you know what, screw it. I put on Christina Aguilera, I'm a fighter, cut the rest of my hair, shaved it. I've been wearing wigs ever since. On her first day at Why Night Intermediate School, she read a story to her class about a girl who had a disorder that made her pull out her hair. And the kicker was, at the end of the story, she, Miss Wilnerherd, pulled off her wig and we all was in awe like, holy mackerels. And she said, that girl is me. And at that point, I looked at all our boys and thought, are they going to laugh? And not one of them laughed. Not one of them. They all looked at her and was like, Miss, does it hurt when you pull out your hair? Are you all right? And right there, I knew already she caught their hearts. Like, she's a really nice person. And it doesn't really matter. Like, as long as she does her job, she's really good and there for us. Miss Wonerher decided to share her story because she wanted her students to understand that she doesn't let her disorder define her or who she is as a person. Everyone has their own issues to deal with in life. Wouldn't it be great if we were judged not by our situations, but by how we treat other human beings? This is Gina Jove reporting from YNI Intermediate School for Hikino. Thank you for watching this special edition of Hikino, focus on compassion, self-identity. These stories prove that Hikino students are thoughtful and conscientious people who value differences and acceptance. I hope you enjoyed watching these stories as much as I've enjoyed sharing them with you. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.